Hello friends, I'm back and worse than ever. Long story short, I was out of the country for like 50% of October, which made me realize just how much I love spooky season and how sad I am that it's over and I wasn't able to fully immerse myself into Halloween. So I hope you don't mind me holding on to that little shred of spooky and making this fun little video while I'm fighting off jet lag and any sicknesses that I may have encountered on any of the eight planes that I was on during the last month and a half. I'll talk about those trips in a moment, but first just let me introduce today's video. I had this idea on Halloween, which it was exactly the day after I got home, and I spent about four hours in three different sittings working on it. It is my main three D&D NPCs plus my main three D&D PCs dressed up as each other for Halloween. I won't spoil who's wearing who, you'll just have to watch the rest of the video, I guess, but it's Merilith, Ezra, and Isaquin alongside Calliope in Kashti and Io. I was initially going to just do three characters in a group cosplay similar to the Chinese New Year drawing that I did of Merilith, Ezra, and Isaquin, but I had so many ideas and also I was having a terrible time choosing between which characters that I wanted to draw. So of course, my horrible smooth little brain said why not draw all of them? And honestly, it's been a hot minute since I've drawn any of these characters or really drawn at all since I've been doing so much sewing and cosplay place since August rolled around and I really just missed sitting down and listening to those nice long YouTube videos that you save for your background work noise and drawing some good old D&D characters. First up is Ezra the Hobgoblin Wild Magic Barbarian and I really struggled with getting her features properly replicated. I either have same face syndrome or I cannot recreate a character at all for the life of me which is definitely probably one of the major things that is coming between me and and a career as a concept and character design artist or an animator, among many, many other issues. But anyways, I eventually managed to get somewhere pretty reasonable with her facial expression. I chose to have Ezra dress up as Calliope, my strawberry cow flavored furball cleric, which strawberry cow flavored furball cleric is very difficult to say for no good reason. Anyways, while Ezra is a barbarian, I do think she is one of those tropes of this is a strong lady who is practical without a fault 90% of the time, and then 10% of the time she sells her soul to sparkly organza fabric, floral prints, and dainty ribbons. My biggest struggle with making Ezra into Calliope was deciding how much and what shades of pink I should incorporate into this character. This might be a hot take or just straight up a me problem, but I think it's kind of difficult to match good pinks and reds without looking a little like a tacky Valentine's Day card. I feel like there's got to be a good balance of light and dark colors, and with Ezra being all red and Calliope's dress being all pink, this became a very overwhelming and incredibly saturated section of the canvas very quickly. Nonetheless, I think I managed to get through it all right, picking less pinky pinks and more dusty pinks and making the sleeves nice and big on our shirt to add a nice big light contrasting section. While I do add a bunch of fun details to each of the outfits, you'll notice that I don't necessarily make any of the costumes perfectly accurate to their original drawings. This was sort of a nod to me as a cosplayer in that I always seem to end up forgetting something when finishing up my cosplay or I can't find the right fabric or I make some random executive decision that changes the entire cosplay appearance fundamentally. And that's not a bad thing. Whether you're a cosplayer who buys their costume or a cosplayer who spends three years and hundreds of dollars and hours investing in a perfectly accurate handmade costume, or if you're kind of a little bit more like me where you're kind of cheap but also bad at time management and also don't have the best sewing skills, but at the end of the day, whatever kind of cosplayer you are, you're proud of your costume and happily dressed as one of your favorite characters, and that's all that matters. Here you can see I'm drawing my PC Calliope in Isaquin Nimble Picks outfit. I also struggled with the colors on this one a bit because I think Isaquin's iconic foresty green washes out the fair pink sections of Calliope's skin, but ultimately I decided there just wasn't a good way to adjust this without making significant color changes, so it is what it is. Also, what I decided to do for Calliope and not most of the characters in this drawing is give her a wig. A wig might be tedious for a character with horns, but if any of these characters is going to have the 
gumption to make a wig work against all odds, it's going to be Calliope. Also, I forgot to mention it, but I really love Ezra's hair being all loose and fluffy in the little ties that Calliope's hair is usually in. I don't know, something about that is just so endearing. At this point in the drawing, the jet lag has hit, and I decided that I will block in the colors for each character and then go back and render the characters individually. Overall, I do think this entire piece is in a much sketchier, loose style than I usually like to do, but bear with me. It's It's been a while since I've done this many characters, and also there's been so much going on, so let me just try and give you a quick recap. At the start of August, I began preparing for the Ren Fair and tasked myself with making and updating four to five cosplays for myself, plus a couple of costumes or clothing pieces for my husband. My goal was to have that all finished throughout the next month, ending by the first weekend in October. August and a lot of September was pretty much day in, day out, cutting patterns, measuring fabric, sewing things, seam ripping, so many things, and I loved every second of it. To say that I thrived is probably quite a bit of an overstatement, but but cosplay, sewing, costuming is a lot of what I love. It's a combination of so many different skills, not just sewing, but creative thinking and problem solving. But as you all know, due to unexpected events in the middle of September, I ended up finishing maybe two and two halves of cosplays before things got kind of a little crazy. Oh, well, I guess I did a couple of smaller costumes for my husband, but none of that ever ended up making it into a video. At this point, it's the middle of September and I end up flying to Poland to attend my grandpa's funeral. Poland was beautiful. I'm very grateful that I was able to go at all, especially on such short notice, which I've mentioned before. But unfortunately, because I had lined up so many major projects for myself, there was no way that I could make any videos ahead of time to prepare for that trip as much as I wanted to and as much as I tried to. The end of September came, I came back to the States, and I immediately got back to work on my IO cosplay videos before the two weeks I had in the States were up, because even way before I found out that I was going to end up in Poland, my husband and I were planning on spending two weeks in Africa, visiting friends, helping set up and get furniture for a rental house and make connections, because my in-laws planned to go there for a much more intense and much longer trip. But Malawi is beautiful, Blantyre is a gorgeous city, it's very underrated as a vacation destination, and I'm so lucky that I have in-laws that like me and trust me and my husband to go start their work over there, and it's only because of them that I was able to go anyways. All I can say is that I just feel very lucky. I had a great time, but it does not cancel out the fact that I am straight up exhausted. I think you can be both very grateful for an opportunity and both tired beyond belief. I think that's allowed and not a bad thing. I did not expect to be this tired, which is why my last community post on YouTube said the Friday video was going to come out late, and by late, it ended up being a week delayed. I did want this video to come out on Halloween, but I think that was just setting the bar a little too high for myself. So, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know everything that's going on, give you the recap, because you guys are so special and important to me. You guys are basically like friends. I tell you what's going on in my life and stuff. And I also don't want to seem like I'm dodging responsibilities or on the other end, like I don't want you guys to think that I'm working myself to the bone to get videos out because I genuinely enjoy doing this. I really miss drawing and it's very cathartic to me to come back with all of my favorite characters in this extended spooky season and it's just what I needed to feel fulfilled again. Okay, okay, but back to the drawing, let's focus on what is probably my favorite costume swap for this entire group, Merlith wearing Inkashti's armor. And y'all gotta know that I don't love drawing armor, but this color palette on Merlith is kind of killer. I really enjoyed putting her in this outfit. Plus, with Merlith's darker, heavier makeup and drawing Inkashti's third eye in red and not purple, it looks so cool. Plus, the high pony shows off a little more depth to Merlith's hair, and also Loki made me realize Merylis and Inkashti, not that different character-wise. Both of them are sorcerers, granted Inkashti's a cleric first and then a sorcerer, but anyways, they're both born into powers that they didn't really ask for. As a result, they also take on roles in large organizations that are a significant role, but are never the roles that seem to quite reach the status or achievement that they want. Merylith is the Demogorgon Temple Guardian, and while this is a high position, she wishes to be the charismatic face and eventually the success 
successor of her father as the head of the Ouroboros family, which is something that her psychic powers and PTSD has put on the back burners for her. Inkashti is second in command for a small squadron, as much as she would love to rise in the ranks after years years of dedicated service to the army, because she's not a natural born human and was crafted as a tool of war, she can never rise to a higher commanding rank. Anyways, just sad girl sorcerer hours I guess, but look at this, I'm running out of time real fast, so let's- Here's Isogwin as Io. You know I had to do it, I had to make the shortest character one of the tallest characters, plus I clearly have a reference of a short person cosplaying as Io. The one thing I did do was opt to keep the characteristic red lip for Isogwin because I feel like that's something that she would never be seen without, even at the cost of costume accuracy. And I'm so sorry, this is so fast. Sorry, Isogwin, you know I love you. Sorry, I don't get to talk about you very much, but here we have Io. Now, we think the concept of Io cosplaying is just a funny idea because Io's a changeling. She could look as much or as little like Ezra as she wanted. I did for a second consider making a joke version of this drawing where I just copied Ezra's original drawing into this photo, but honestly, for being a changeling, I I don't really use Io's ability to the fullest at all. In fact, I spend 90% of my time looking like my party members with exaggerated features as a joke. So I totally think it's in character for Io to just change her teeth to look like Ezra's and put a couple dark streaks in her hair to mirror Ezra's gray and white streaks. But that note brings us to the end of the video. Ta-da! Happy belated Halloween from Ezra, Calliope, Merilith, Ian Kashti, Isogwen, and Io. Imagine a campaign with these six, although that's five spellcasters and a barbarian, which is a little bit chaos. Um, anyways, I hope you like this group as much as I do. I know it's not one of my more extravagant paintings, but I just wanted to be able to come back and do something low energy, but also made me feel good, and I hope it made you guys feel good too. Happy belated Halloween from me. It's already snowed here once, so the Christmas creep is real. I had so much planned for fall in October before everything became a crisis and traveling and sickness, and I love spooky season, so kind of resent having to turn it over to the other holidays just yet, so I don't know, what do you guys think about me just continuing spooky content so I can feel like I'm still spooky inside and didn't miss out? I don't know, is that is that weird? It might be weird, I don't know. Who knows? Not me. Oh.